All right, folks, listen, I know why you're here, right? Today is really about the technique and how to make a, you know, the perfect, you know, grilled chicken sandwich, right? Listen, it's super easy, but I'm gonna give you guys some tips so that it'll look right, right? We don't wanna take one of these, you know, fat breasts like this and just do it, right? So I'm gonna show you how to butterfly, how to put it in the inside. Actually, this is gonna end up being two. So this is four burgers right here. Now, with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so look, you can see it's not a whole lot of ingredients, right? Listen, sometimes I tell you, sometimes simple is, you know, is best, right? But this is gonna be the key. I got me a spicy mayo. This is a sriracha mayo. You know what I mean? This is gonna work. And then we got, you know, as you can see, we got bacon, right? I always like to use a thick, you know, the thick cut bacon. Now, don't forget the full ingredient list will be on my website, smoking and grilling with ab.com, and that's W I T A B.com. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my bacon, right? I like to put bacon on mine. If you ask me, you know what I mean? Everything is better with bacon. You know what I mean? But I do understand some people don't eat the pork. And listen, if you go to Porter Road, listen, I don't get nothing from them, but Porter Road makes a beef bacon that is to die for. I just don't have any that's not thaw thawed out. I usually buy about, we try to buy like 10 pounds at a time. Okay, so look, as you see, we got our bacon going, right? Now, if you come over here to the cutting board, these are our breasts, right? Look how big these are. These are nice, but I'm gonna show you how to cut them down. Now, this is a grilled chicken sandwich, right? So check it out. I can use this cast iron, or I could use my kettle grill, or I can use my griddle top. Okay, so look, now this is what I wanna show you. You see how thick this is? If we were to cook this on the griddle or on the grill, it doesn't make a difference how you do it. Obviously, I'm gonna be using my uh, cast iron skillet. Right? This part would be overcooked before this part is, right? So what we want to do is we want to butterfly it. So I'm gonna start with this one right here since it's over here on this edge. And I'm gonna start from the bigger side, this side over this way, and I'm gonna come in and go this way, right? So you see the way it's shaped? I'm gonna take it. I just bring it over here so I can see it, right? Then I just start cutting my, bringing it this way, right? See how that is? Now I'm gonna take the tip of my knife, right? And just, and kind of like just start to open it up. This part real simple. Doesn't make a difference if you cut in and it don't seem too, you know, like maybe it don't look okay to you and you had to like move over, that's okay. Cause ultimately we wanted to be able to open up like this and get it flat, right? But I think we can get this a little bit more just like you see that right there, right? And that's butterfly. This way, when we put this on the grill, all of this is about the same thickness and it'll cook evenly. Without that, folks, you gotta do a little work. All right, so let's come back to this bacon over here. I don't know about y'all, I don't want mine too crispy. I like mine to be a little bit more pliable, you know what I mean? So I think I'm gonna take a couple of these pieces out, like those two pieces right there. Okay, so once you got a butterfly, you can see how big these are, right? I mean, these are kind of big, you know what I mean? Uh, so look, I'm gonna go ahead and take my knife, you know what I mean? And I think I'm gonna take this one here and I'm just gonna cut this one in half. Let's do it like this. In actuality, man, that's a big, this is a big slice. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it down this way, right? And so we have these two halves and then this one over here, I probably won't take off as much as that, it's going to tighten up once it hit that, you know, that pan, right? And so we'll have this. This is pretty much like about the same. You know what I mean? So even if we were doing it outside, this would give us the grill mark if we were looking for doing that on like on a, a grill with a grate. You know what I mean? But this is the part I want to show you that's going to be a little different for you guys. Look, you see this right here? We got mayo. We're going to tenderize and, right? We're going to tenderize and we're going to marinate with just a little bit of this you know, mayonnaise. Trust me, folks. For those of you guys that have been with me for a minute, you know I don't never steer you guys wrong. And if you're new, read the comments and I'll let you know. Now, I'm gonna be using my A seasoning. You see this right here? If you get up on it and look at it closely, it says great for that poultry. This right here is one of the level ups. I'm just gonna take some of this mayo, right? And I'm just gonna work this in on both sides, right? I know some of y'all right now, you're thinking like, ah, A.B., I don't eat mayo. Trust me, it's just like everybody told me they don't put mayo on their buns, they only use butter. But once you try it, 
everybody comes back and be like, AB, hey, that might even be better than butter. You know what I mean? Uh, just trust me, folks. I promise you, I'm not going to steer you wrong. Then you apply a little bit of the seasoning to it. Just like you see, folks. Another reason why we want to butterfly a big piece of, uh, you know, meat like that, no matter what it is, you want to get some seasoning down into it, right? So by us thinning it out, look, now we're able to get seasoning into the deepest part, right? So now I'm going to take it, we leave it like that, right? And then we flip it. Okay, folks, so listen, what are we going to do with this right here? Now, you know what we finna do. We finna save that. So listen, I got my jar right here. You know what I mean? Uh, go ahead and put that strain on the top. I just want to let y'all know this is a little bit on the warm side. So I just take it and I just pour it in like this. All right, so look, now let's talk about this bread real fast. I'm bringing my temp back up. I went ahead and, you know, cleaned out the rest of the residue, which you guys know what that was. That was the fine, right? So now I like to use buns like this. You guys can use any type of hamburger bun you would like. I just say, if you're gonna use something that's whole like this, go ahead and get yourself a serrated, you know, knife and let the knife do the work. You don't need to really saw. Just as you pull it, just the weight of the knife should just go ahead and just cut right through it, all right? All right, so you see those right here? We finna come back with that mayo, right? I'm not gonna give it a whole lot. I'm just gonna give it just a little bit. That's just enough. Just so that it like steam a little bit. You know what I mean? It's just soften up the bun, but you don't wanna make them too soft. It depends on what type of, you know, bun or what type of like hamburger I'm making decides how much I put on there. But you can see just a little bit goes a long ways. Then we just take them and just go ahead and set them. Okay, folks, so look, let's go ahead and take a look at it. <clears throat> now you guys can go as dark as you would like for it to be. This right here is, is good for me, right? Let's take a look at this one. But you guys got the gist of it. I'm gonna leave this one on just a little longer. Okay, so after I take my toasted buns out, right? Look, I let it cool just a little bit, but I got the fire back underneath it, right? Now we're getting ready to put that chicken in there. For me, I like to use a little extra uh, virgin olive oil. Obviously, this is infused, you know what I mean? The reason I say obvious, that's for those who've been following me. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I swear by it. I got it, it's a little bit on the hot side. But we want it to be a little bit on the hot side. You know why? Because now is the time that we can put our chicken in. Yes, sir. Marinated in that mayonnaise, you know, seasoned properly. Watch what we finna get out of this. Okay, so look, this is what we wanna do, folks. Listen, now that we butterflied, everything is pretty much the equally re equal height, right? So we want to manage the fire because we don't want it to be too dark, overcooked on one side or nothing like that, right? Because I tell you guys, the pre presentation is everything. So it was a little bit on a medium high side. As soon as I put everything in here, I went down to a medium flame. Now, don't forget, we're doing chicken, so we're going to have to, you know, like check it, right? So if you come, you guys come on over here and take a look. Look, I got a meat thermometer. Listen, this is how I check and make sure that I'm 165, right? That's the chicken. This is white meat, that's breast, so that's what you wanna have. And if you're lucky, you know, get yourself one of these, check it out, you even got the signature on it. Okay, so, not to be going back to, the, you know, my products, listen, all of the products that I sell that's under my brand, listen, these are low sodium products, right? So, just a little bit of salt just wakes it up, just a little bit, right? I like to cook with kosher salt, you know what I mean? You don't need much. Usually when I do what I do, you know, and I serve whatever I'm serving, nobody has to go back and do anything else. Now, sometimes they do, those are for those people that have that high tolerance for salt. But this right here is what we want to have. Then we flip it over. Notice I didn't really use no pepper, because pepper gives you that dark look and it kind of like burns, right? Takes on a different taste, which is the taste that we like, but we were doing this right now for the presentation. Okay, folks, so look, now I'm about to give up, a, you know, a little bit more game, right? You ever notice that when you put, you know, meat inside of a pan, whether it's a uh, cast iron or whether it's in a uh, stainless steel, you know how it sticks and then people be looking at the bottom and all of that. You want to know when it's time to flip or when it releases itself, let you know that that's cool. Now watch this. I'm just going to take this. I haven't done anything with it. I'm just going to do like this. Look, you see how it's live? Obviously, that didn't stick, right? So let's look at it for the first time right now. And look at that right there. That right there, get that money, don't it? Now this one here, I'm gonna let it cook just a little bit longer because you can see this was the top part of that breast, that real, real thick part. It kind of like a little thicker there and it slows down. So we're gonna allow that to cook just a little bit longer before I, you know, flip it over. 
Okay, so look, this is my burger press. A lot of you guys have, you know, have this already. It's got a nice little weight to it. And you see this one right here? Look, see how I, I told you that this was like the bigger part of the breast? So listen, if you want to get a more of a flat surface, you could just set this on the top. Trust me, all of the places where you go and eat at, when they cook on the griddle, everybody has something like this to just set on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and take this, my mandolin. You guys know I like using my mandolin whenever I can. It's nice, it's safe, and most of all, it's even. So, I'm gonna be using my sriracha mayo, right? Let's go ahead and get some of this on here. All right, so now we're gonna add a little lettuce. You guys use whatever type of greenery you want to. I don't care if you put kale on it, doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? You, what you're doing is you're making what's best for you, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just put this piece on there just like that. I'm gonna get myself a slice of this tomato. Right? Now, if you come on over here, look, we're gonna go ahead and take this off. I just temp this, matter of fact, just to let you know that that's right. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just add this right here on top, just as you see, right? Now, it's up to you. If you wanna put a slice of cheese on there, you can, you know what I mean? Or you can leave it like that. You can put pickles on it, you don't have to, but I want you to take a look at that work. That work is, look at how that grilled up. Now, just imagine if I'd have done it outside and fused it with maybe some of that Kingsford, you know what I mean? Or did it in a pellet grill, however you wanna do it. Right, but we'll just put it on like that. I'll grab a top. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on here, like this. Right, we're gonna take that and then we're just gonna put this right over the top. If that ain't no grilled, you know, a grilled chicken sandwich, I don't know what it is. So now we'll take this one, we'll put this on the top right here. And if you guys notice, I didn't put no bacon on the others. You know what I mean? Because some of these people right here are around here talking about, they claiming them. You know what I mean? So they like, hey, don't put no bacon on mine. I got everybody spoiled on that beef bacon. Then we go ahead and put that top on. And then once we do that, you guys can pull the bacon out. You know, if you want the bacon to be seen, I guess for the picture, yeah, let's do it. But that right there is how you grill chicken. Okay, so you guys just seen how, you know, how I do it, right? It's the, really the butterfly. It's the fact that we put the mayo and the seasoning on there to marinate it and it kind of like just make the meat a little bit more juicier. You know what I mean? So listen, I'm not finna over talk it. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this down like this. All right? Then if I take it like this, now we'll be able to see. Look at that. That's that juicy white meat right there, folks. Now I'm finna get down. I'm finna put this over here. You know what? Let's just bite it on that side. But you can see it's juicy. Any juices you see running off of this right now, that's from the chicken, right? Cheers, y'all. I don't know, like, I don't know if the video does it justice or not, but when you bite into this, you saw it dripping. That's after it's just been relaxing and you know, kind of like resting on its own. You know what I mean? That's what it produces. So listen, if you follow this technique, the way I did, we butterfly, we marinate it, we use mayo, we seasoned it, then we put it in the pan. Listen, whether it's the pan or the grill, we didn't mess with it until it released itself, right? We used the meat thermometer, right? So we got 165, then we took it off. Let it rest while you get everything together and then go ahead and eat it. I bet you y'all, y'all coming back. Some of y'all, I know, man, I done had it at my friend's house and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is the proper way to do it, folks. Now, I can barely talk, so check it out. If you're new to my channel, let me take this time to say thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, smash that subscribe button and tell everybody out there, there's a channel out here that's giving up the gems, folks, and taking the mystery out of cooking. I know I caught y'all off guard. And hey, with that being said, listen, I'm about to eat. I'm out. Peace.